although I have videos that include discussion on using discovery where you you create a project and in the course of doing it instead of you picking a processor you hit discover and whatever you've got set up on RS links it goes out and finds it like one of these folks over here if I've got it connected to my computer in other words if I have like this USB cable connected or if I've got this Ethernet cable connected and set up an RS links then I can discover it so instead of saying I want an LC20 QBB I just hit discover and it comes out and it shows me everybody that's out there and I say yeah I want that one right there and I pick it these videos are very slow moving so rather than take and go through and delete out all of the minor details and discussion I just leave it all in there I eliminate the silences or shorten the pauses and I get rid of the hesitations so this video is on using the discovery process most folks like me when I create a project I just pick the the controller that I'm going to use and start working on the program I don't even have the controller sitting in front of me so I can't discover it unless you're connected to it let's do this I'm going to go through a process of discover I have a number of units that I can do this with and I will probably run into some issues I always do typically it's with RS links and I can't always explain or find the reason that it didn't behave the way I expected, but I can always get it to behave. I can always sort it out. And that's why I'm a firm believer in teaching people the concepts, not the procedures. Because if you understand the concepts, if you know what you're trying to do and you know what's available to you to do it, you will figure out how to get it done without any steps from anybody. I'm going to create a new project first and discover is all about creating a new project, but beginning by discovering the controller or the processor that you're hooked to, that you're connected with. Right now I'm connected to a remote LCD display at 2080 REM LCD that is hardwired into the green terminal strip the RS-232 or the DF-1485 terminal strip that's on the LC-820. It's a micro-820, has Ethernet, and then it has a serial, like an RS-231 type connection, but it's not a connector. It's just a terminal strip, and I have that wired directly into the REM LCD. I'm going to hit Discover, but before I do that, I think I'll go to RS Links. Go down here, bring up RS links, and here is my REM LCD, and I see a micro 820 there. Okay, so I've got a, if I browse th this unit now, remember this pops up by itself. So I'm going to collapse that back down. I'm going to unplug the connector from the micro 820, and you heard the computer complain, and you instantly saw that driver disappear. So it's plug and play. Let me plug it back in. And you heard the computer say, welcome back. And there's the 2080 REM LCD. Now let's unplug it again. And this time I'm going to plug it into a USB port on, I believe it's an LC50, micro 50. And I just noticed I have no power on it. What I have in my work area here, is I have a very large 24 volt DC power supply and then I have a switchboard with like a dozen or so toggle switches on it and then I have two wires going out from each of those switches so to speak there's a common you know we'll call that zero and then the switches switch the positive or the 24 and I have it going out to bulkhead type connectors so I can plug them into each system individually. Instead of having two dozen wall warts massively making a clutter on a power strip, I have one power supply and then I have a power distribution system that goes out to them all. So now I'm gonna plug it in the LC50 and the computer 
said hello and now you see the usb popped up down here okay so i'm gonna unplug it watch the usb it's gone i'm gonna plug into the rem lcd plugged into the rem lcd and that's back okay so if i expanded the rem lcd i see a microwave 20. if i unplug it disappears plugged it into the LC50, and you immediately, immediately see the USB pops up, and there is the microwave 50. Now, I also see a microwave 70 pop up. That's because I have a microwave 70, and I have had it plugged in before. And remember that RS Links, if it comes up with something with a red X through it, that means, well, I saw it before, but I don't see it now. So if I were to take that USB connection and move it over to the 870, which I'm going to. If you're watching, you see 15 microwave 50, and I'm going to unplug from the 850, and the whole USB thing disappears. Plug it into the micro 870, and then come back, and you see that now there's a red X through the 850, and the 870 is visible. Unplug it from the 870, and then plug it into an 810. And notice that the, the 810 came up in a different place. It didn't come up under the REM LCD because I don't have a REM LCD hooked to it. It didn't come under USB. It popped into an entirely different location in our RS Who. Remember, I've said that the Micro 810 is the odd man out. It is something unto itself. I don't think it's even made by the same manufacturer. I think it's a VAR value added remark from some other company. So the Micro 810 is relate, it's like adopted into the Micro 800 family, if you like. Plug it from the 810. Notice that the 810 disappeared when I unplugged it. Now I'm gonna plug it back into the 870. USB pops back up and I've got the USB showing. Now I'm going to try plugging in two of them at the same time to USB. We heard the computer welcome the new USB connection. And now you see both of them are represented under USB. And if I unplug one from the 70, red X appears and go over to the 50. I've already got the 50 plug in. I was going to plug into the 20 which I will, but remember the 20 does not have a USB connection, but I have a 2080 REM LCD DF1 up here. So you see, there's the 820. I'm going to look for a third USB cable and plug another one into the 870. Okay, now I'm going to plug into the LC50. I'm sorry, the 70. 70 is not showing back up. Oh, there it is. It just took a while. What you're seeing is I have discovered Micro 820 that is using a 2080 REM LCD as a pass-through. So I'm going in the USB port on the remote LCD display to an 820. I'm also going through the USB port on my computer to a Micro 850 and an 870. So remember, I'm in the discover mode now. I'm not in just going and looking at RS links. One I really wanted to discover was the 820. I could use any of them, though. That was looking at RS links. Now let's do a new project with discover. This is where I've noticed an issue in the past, is that what I see in RS links, RS who, doesn't necessarily match what I see here. So first I'll discover, okay, the 820 shows up there and we'll see if the 850 and the eight, okay, so we're good. So this is what I expected. Every once in a while, it doesn't seem to work and I have to turn something off and back on or unplug the USB cable and kind of shake it loose or something. So at this point, I could pick an 870 and I'll just do that and say, okay. And now it's gonna create a project for this specific part number that I have. So if I go to Micro 870 here, see, 
I had a start page. Now I've got micro 870. And once this thing totally resolves itself and gets lined up, it's not being, it has not been totally created yet. And there we are it's still thinking. Looks like it's done now. So now I can go to these different tabs and you see it's an L7024 QBB, 24 embedded IO. QBB is DC in, DC out, and it supports. If there's any motion that can be supported, it'll support it. It supports pulse train output PTO. It supports PWM, pulse width modulation, high speed counters. Do you always get the best of everything with a QBB? And that doesn't matter what family you're looking at. DC in, DC out, and it tends to have the best of everything. So I could go through and look at Ethernet and see that right now it's set up for actually boot P. Now it says DHCP. Boot P is Alan Bradley's version of DHCP, Data Handling Control Protocol. Boot P is like DHCP, but you associate specific IP addresses with the MAC ID that pops up. When you first put a NIC, Network Interface Controller, onto a network, it sends out its MAC ID. A server out there will then assign an Ethernet IP address to, or an Ethernet IP number configuration that you can address if you wanted to address that particular unit. The difference is with, D, with DHCP, the server typically leases you an IP address for 48 or 72 hours. Boot P, you have to make a permanent association. Anytime that MAC ID comes up, it's going to give it the same internet protocol address. And that's what you want in the control world. We're not going to mess with this. And I didn't want an LC70 project, but you can see expansion modules. There's got three plug-in module slots. Now, if this were a C7048 IO, you would have more plug-in modules. It'll support two axes of motion. Pay attention there. Now, I'm going to get rid of this. I'm not going to save it. I'll close it, and I'll go back to Discover. And I picked the 870. Now I'll pick the 850. And it's going to go through the same process. The geeks in the background are going to assemble a project based on the part number that it discovered. So some of it you see looks the same. Once it's settled down, then we'll take a look. Now this notices a micro 850. It says micro 850 here. If I go to general, it's a 48 QBB. So remember the LC70 was a 24 QBB. This is an LC50 48 QBB. So it has double the embedded I.O. Notice it also supports three axes of motion, and it has more than three plug-in modules. Now, an LC7048 would also have five plug-in modules. But notice that this does not support as many expansion modules as the LC7024 QBB. Now, again, we don't want to get too far off into the weeds here. Now, this one I have set up as Ethernet address 116. And I think I also have the Micro 820 set up at the same IP address. So if I were to plug them both into Ethernet, I would have a duplicate IP address situation. Okay, I don't want this Micro 850. I just wanted to show you that it, it will fully discover and create a project. So I'm going to close. We'll go back to discover. And I've already done these two down here the 70 and the 50. Now I'm going to go up here and do the, and I could plug that LC10 back in, but I really don't care about that thing. If you're working on a project where they're using an LC10, I hope that it's going to be one of hundreds of machines that are 100% identical because you will burn up more engineering time and everything else making an LC10 fit the bill when it should have been a 20, 50, 70, or even a 30. 30 does not have Ethernet. I can't see putting a controller in the field without an Ethernet connection. I just can't see it. Now, if you're selling machines, for instance, one of the projects I'm working on has three yellow fellows. 
Fanuc Scara robots. I call them yellow fellows. And uh, so I could have plugged it into the LC10 and had that pop up. Remember that popped up yet different than the remote LCD or the USB. Even though I plugged it into a USB connector on the microwave 10, it didn't show up under USB. It, it showed up under its own plug and play condition. So I'm going to pick the 20 because that's what I want. Then I'm going to let it create the project. Almost done. You don't see the little swirly anymore. It's done. So I'm going to kill the output, which it didn't, which means it's not done. I tried to click on this X down here and it didn't go away, which means that it hasn't fully completed. See the clock, the little swirly still going. So we'll go back up to the controller here, general. It came up with a message that says the current project does not match the content in the connected controller. I'm going to say, okay, but I don't want to do anything with that because when you create a project from scratch, the Ethernet is set up to obtain an IP address automatically. We don't want to do that. We want to configure an IP address in settings. This also has a subnet mask. And if this were 255.0.0.0, then 169 is the address of that network. 255.255. .255 then that means, remember, subnet, then 169.254, that is the address of the network, and these are the nodes on the network. If I make this 255, 255, 255, then 169, 254, 15 become the address of that network, and 170 is one of the 256 nodes on that network. So, just a little quickie on Ethernet there. I don't want to download this because I don't want to overwrite the setup that I currently have in that microwave 20. And I do have an IF4. Now remember, we discovered this controller, this processor, and whatever is attached to it as far as IO modules go. And notice for plug-in modules, I have an IF4. That's a 4 analog input module. It discovered it. Now I'm going to upload into this project. Now it says project three. I want to call this, well, I'll just upload. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Notice it comes up and says upload overwrites current project content with the project that's in the controller. The only reason I'm doing this is because I want to see what's in that controller. And I want to know what the IP address is. Now, I could do it like it was right out of the box. And just for grins, I think I'll do that. I was going to upload with logical values, but instead, well, I'll go ahead and upload with logical values. And then we can do this again and pretend like it's a, a fresh out of the box unit. I am uploading. Now, when it says disconnect, that means it's connected. See, up here it says connected. When I discovered it, I connected with it inadvertently. Now, uh, upload of logical values to current projects succeeded. Upload one succeeded, no fail, no up to date, no skip. So now we're online with this project. And if I connect with Ethernet, now I understand why it did not show up on Ethernet earlier. Remember what I told you that if you create a new project and then you download, you write, completely write over everything in the controller. And that's what I did yesterday or earlier today without paying attention to what I was doing. So when I tried to find it on Ethernet, I could not find it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this. Remember, it's project three. File close. I'm going to discover, and it's going to come up and tell me that what I have offline, or rather I should say what I have on the controller doesn't match the project that's being created. Okay, current project does not match the content in the connected controller. It's showing me the connected controllers. I focused on the discovery with USB connections and I neglected the Ethernet, so I'm going to quick do a discovery with the Ethernet. Discover, Ethernet IP, 
and there it is. Geeks are busy thinking in the background, putting the project together, discussing amongst themselves how they want it to look, and eventually it'll get done. This is not a real fast process. And when you think it's done, it's not really done. And if you get impatient and start clicking on stuff, you're going to find it doesn't respond. So if you keep seeing that little blue swirly or whatever it is on your computer, or if you go down here, now you see that I'm getting the mouse over tips or guides. When that occurs, usually you're done. And so there's the, the same project that we already looked at, but we discover it with Ethernet. Thank you for watching. You can learn a lot watching these uh, videos, but it would be worth your while to get this, pick up this set of manuals. And you can see that there's quite a bit here. These are not small manuals, over 600 pages total. We're assuming that you have the manuals when you're watching these videos. By all means, watch them without the manuals, but you're going to be better off if you're doing the lab projects as we go. Thank you.